Hello and welcome to Class Time. You can catch us live every weekday from 9 to 10 a.m. on TVJ and on OneSpotMedia.com. You can also tune in to the School Time channel also on OneSpotMedia.com. And you can also keep up with us on our various social media platforms and use the hashtag to make queries or answer online questions. I am Karima Mundell Thomas. And I am Latoya Shiraya. We'll be guiding you through today's mathematics lesson. Let's begin. Let's begin. So what are we doing today, Karima? Well, we're looking at answering multiple choice questions. Okay. And in particular, we're going to be zooming in on questions related to algebra, relations, functions, and graphs. All right, sounds good. Right, but before we get into the meat of the matter, you know, right. we want to at least give our students some strategies mm -hmm. that they can use when answering multiple choice questions. Fair enough. All right. So one of the things we want to encourage our students to do is to read each question carefully. And when we talk about the question, we're not talking about just the STEM, but the options as well. I don't know if it has ever happened to you, Latoya. You're, you're, you've read a question and immediately you started working. And then when you look at the options, you were like, oh my goodness, I, That's didn't, not I didn't need to do break all this. of that. Exactly. Right, right, right. So read the entire question carefully. All right, got it. Find keywords or phrases in the question that will help you to choose the correct answer. All right, especially yes. that not. You want to look out for the not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. All right, so another strategy is to work the easiest problems first. So we know the exam is timed, right? Yes. And so we want to ensure that, you know, we try as much as possible to answer those questions that require maybe less effort. Yes. Yes, before we get to the more difficult questions. Because we know that there are 60 questions and you have one and a half minute. Hour. No, to answer each question. Oh, okay. So All the right, exam fine. is one and a half hour. And you have one and a half minutes to Her answer question. each question. That's not a lot of time. No, it isn't. And there are some questions that may actually require a little more than that. Right. So you want to answer the easier questions in a shorter time so that you make up for the harder questions that you'll need more time to complete. Agreed. So that takes us into the next thing. Pace yourself, right? Don't spend too much time on any one question, yes. right? Attempt the question, do your best, and then move to another question. Watch the clock. Definitely. We also encourage our students to estimate the answers. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by that, you know, when you read a question, think about what the question is asking and develop in your mind an idea of what the correct answer is may look like. So is it a large number? Is it a small number? Is it something with a variable? And you could actually even break it down a little bit more detailed than that in your estimate. Right. But having estimated the answers, what that does for you is that it helps you to eliminate any wrong answer. So that transitions us into the next point, eliminate any wrong answers, right? And I want to point out that the estimating you're not using your estimate to necessarily select the correct answer, but you're using it to eliminate any answers that you are sure would not be correct. Makes sense. All right. So one of the things we want to highlight, Latoya, if you eliminate two incorrect answers, your chances of choosing the right answer is greater. True. Right, because if I, if I have four questions, it means that four I have options. four options. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it means that I have 25% chance of getting a correct answer. But if I definitely eliminate two, now I have a 50 50 percent chance of getting the correct answer. Yes, there you go. Another thing we want to encourage our students to do is to work backwards. What do we mean when you get an answer, plug back that answer? into the question and see if it actually works out. All right, so we're encouraging that. And there are some times too, maybe you're not so sure, you know, we're hoping to build your confidence today, but just in case you're not so sure, uh -huh. there may be questions that you actually have to try the options and see which one actually gives, gives the correct answer. 
as you said. All right. Now, uh, a lot of times, uh, students tend to you know, change their answers multiple times. One of the things we want to encourage is that you don't change your answer unless you're sure of the correction. Okay. You know, ensure that the reason you're changing your answer is legit. That's what we're saying. Makes sense. Yeah. And not because your neighbor has that answer. Uh, we're not even going there, <laughs> okay? Now, if your answer does not match one of the choices, because we know it's multiple choice, and for this particular multiple choice, it's single response, of course, mm -hmm. and there are four options. So say, for example, you have answered the question and your answer does not match any of the responses. Reread the problem, recopy the numbers, and try solving again. Because nine times out of 10, the correct answer is there. <laughs> okay, and finally, we want to encourage our students to not leave any question unanswered, right? Don't leave any question unanswered. Answer all questions. There is no penalty for answering incorrectly, right? And you mentioned something about, you know, chance. Mm -hmm. So if I don't answer a question, what are the chances of me getting it correct? Zero. Zero, right? But if I answer the question... You have a 25% chance of getting the correct answer. Better a 25% chance so than zero shared, chance. share that letter and give yourself a chance. <laughs> no question should be left unanswered. All right. So... They got this. Yeah, I believe so too. So we are looking at algebra in our first segment, and we're gonna be taking you through a few questions. So let's start with question one. If three N is an even number, which of the following is an odd number? Okay, all right. Okay, you've got this. All right, so if 3n, I'm rereading the question, right. is an even number. See, see, I'm using my strategy there. Mm -hmm. If 3n is an even number, which of the following is an odd number? I have 3n minus one, subtract 1, 3n subtract 2, 3n plus 2, 3n plus 2n. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with an even number. All right. Because they say 3n is an even number, any right. even number. So I'm starting with 6 is my even number. All right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow through with the options to see which of these options will result in an odd number. That is my strategy that I'm going to use. I'm going to work backwards. All right. Fine by me. All right. So... Starting with the first option, 3n minus 1, which is my 6. Remember, 6 is my 3n. When I subtract 1, that's 5. And is 5 an odd number? Yes, it is. But okay. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to try all my options to see if there's a better option, so to speak. Or if <laughs> just this to, is... Or to verify. Just to verify. Uh, yes? No problem. All right. So the next option is 3n subtract 2. Remember, my 3n is 6. When I subtract 2, that's going to give me 4. That's an even number. Mm -hmm. So definitely can't work. All right. All right. Next one is 3n plus 2. My 3n is 6. 6 plus 2, that's 8. And that is resulting in an even number. So c is definitely out. And I know that when you multiply any number by 2, the result will be an even number. Okay. And since I would have tried an even number at C, I know that D would not work out either. Yes, right? I would also know that if we sum two even numbers, the result is definitely another even number. Definitely. Definitely. And so my answer has to be E, 3N subtract 1. All right, that's why you seem to be on point today. Let's see if we can step it up a bit and transition into question number two All right. and see how we can handle this one. So it says, if three multiplied by x subtract one, of mm -hmm. course, that's in bracket here, and then we're to subtract two times x subtract one, all in bracket there again, mm -hmm. and the result is seven. And they're asking us, what is the value 
of that quantity that's in bracket. In other words, what's the value of x subtract 1? And we have some options here. Okay. Now, when I looked at this question, Latoya, what popped out at me personally mm -hmm. is that the, the quantity that's inside the bracket here. Yes. So, so 3 is multiplying the same quantity that 2 here is multiplying. So I'm thinking that real and truly, I'm seeing like terms coming mm. out right here. So I can quickly identify my like terms, which are here. So this term, 3 is multiplying the very same thing in the bracket here, and the very same X thing subtract one. is in the bracket there. Ah. Right. So a lot it of means times we think of like terms as one variable or a, the variables are right beside each other and not a factor. Right. Like so, this. Definitely. That's so cool. I wanted our students to really see what's happening here. That yes. there's actually a nice way that we could actually simplify this. Yes. So if I had three of a particular value and I subtract two of that same value. You just have... One of the value. I just have one of that value left, right? Easy peasy. So I basically only have one of the x subtract one here. Huh. And what do you know? That's equal to seven. You know, I wouldn't have done it that way. I figured many persons probably would not have yeah. seen that. But, you know, yeah. we have to show various ways. I like this way. Yeah. I would have just gone the route of. Expanding, expanding the brackets and, and simplifying. simplifying. Well, yep. we could do that. We could. Let's try that approach and see if it really works. Okay, so we would distribute, distribute <laughs> um, three, three across what's inside of the bracket there, which is x subtract one, mm -hmm. and likewise distributing two to what's inside of the bracket x subtract one, and simplify. When I simplify, I did get the same answer. There you go. Love and you that. see, this would have probably taken us a little bit more time. Yes. So we want to try as Definitely. much as possible to, you know, maximize. Yes. We time. want the more efficient strategies. There you go. For that limited time. Definitely. Without the use of a calculator. Can I just say that? Yes. All that's right. important. So here you are. Here is our, our third question. The graph of the inequality in the diagram above is defined by, and we need to define that graph above. Hmm. So let's try it. Let us pause a little bit and look at this, you know, with a critical eye. All right. Critical glasses on. Great. So I'm looking at this number line here, and I'm noticing that when I look at this circle right here, mm -hmm. and this circle right here mm -hmm. they look identical yes, yes right yes so even though i'm not quite sure what they mean as yet i can use the fact that they are identical to actually eliminate some options all right so i'm expecting therefore that the the symbols will either both have an or equal to component mm -hmm. or both wouldn't Without. have it, right? Okay. So I'm looking at option A, and I notice um, I'm seeing the sign here, the first one without the R equal to component, mm -hmm. and the second one with. With. So Which I'm is not reflecting what our graph is exactly. reflecting. So we can eliminate that one. Exactly. Right, and and for the same reason, we could B. actually eliminate B Okay, as so we well. have a 50-50% chance of getting the correct answer. <laughs> there you go, girl. All right, like Right that. on the ball. So now we need to figure out now, clearly, mm -hmm. we need to know now what do these circles mean. Now they are unshaded. Right. What does the unshaded, what does an unshaded circle mean in the diagram? Hmm. What does the unshaded circle mean in the diagram? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the unshaded circle actually is telling us that in this case, X cannot be equal to the value identified. Okay. Right? So in this case, what are the values that have been identified? We have negative, negative two, two and, and we positive have three. positive three. So we're saying X cannot 
be equal to any of those values. But X can be greater than negative 2, mm -hmm. right? And it would be less than 3. Definitely. All right? So which of these options are we going for? C. Definitely option C, which is telling us negative 2 is less than X, which is less than Three. And I also want to point out, even if sometimes you have a little trouble with identifying uh, what that symbol represents, whether greater than or less than, less than, we certainly know that D could not be our answer because it has the or equal to component on it. For this question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So those are clues that we can look out for. Yes. All right, let's go to question four. If x is an integer that satisfies the inequality 6 subtract 2x is less than or equal to 8, then we're being asked to find which of these options is correct as it relates to the value of x. So I'm looking at this, Latoya. It looks like an inequality that we can simplify a bit. Yes. So let's, let's do that. So we could actually subtract 6 from both sides of our inequality, and we're left with 2 Negative 2x is less than or equal to positive 2. So now we need to divide both sides by negative 2. What will that give us? Hmm. So let's tell you. Here's the thing now. I remember something about what happens when you divide an inequality by a negative number. Mm -hmm. But I can't quite remember it right now. But one thing I know though based on what I have. So x is either greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, we're not sure yet, Yes. but negative one is here. And so I could actually look back at my options and see options that could be eliminated. Ah. Yes, so I'm thinking b and c could Definitely. be eliminated because those are showing me positive one right off the bat. Right. So I now need to decide between a and d. So let's see if we can explore a little bit. All right. Let's explore a bit. So we have negative 3 is less than 2, right? Is that a correct statement, Latoya? It is. It is, because we're looking at the number line and we're really seeing that negative 3 is actually less than positive 2. But here's my question. I am going to now divide negative 3, the, in, the entire inequality, by negative 1. So I'm okay. dividing the entire inequality by negative 1. So now I have positive 3, and I kept the symbol as yes. it was, so it's saying positive 3 is less than negative 2. But that's not possible. Is that correct? No, it's not. No, it's not correct, because I'm looking at the number line right here, and I'm seeing that 3 is actually greater than negative 2. It is. So one of the things um, we're seeing here is that if we divide or inequality by some negative quantity, mm -hmm. then something happens with the sign, yes? And I want to also put it out there that we could have multiplied by negative one as well. Right, we and would have the same seen, result. would have seen the same result. So yes. we're noticing here that we can't just keep the inequality symbol as is right. if we have divided through by some negative quantity. So let's transfer that knowledge here. Ah, so now we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And our answer is D. Let's okay. move right along. Question 5. So if M asterisk N, sometimes you might hear it as star in some cases, is equal to the square root of M square subtract N square, notice it's all under the square root symbol, then 5 star 3 is equal to? We don't know, <laughs> but let's find out. <laughs> let's find out. But you know, Latoya, these binary operations, they really are a version in my mind of substitution because, is you know, an operation is taking place on these two values. Yes. And we can see the operation clearly here. Yes. So all we need to do is to figure out which value is M and, and which, which one, one is, is N, N and substitute. Yes. So in this case, our M would be 5, because it appeared first, so we're yes. following the order, and our N would actually be 3. But I want to stop you here, Karima. I've read the CSEC report, and I see where 
Five squared, I can tell you that somebody is going to write ten. <laughs> and three squared, somebody is going to write six. I know, right? And then they're going to get four underneath that square root symbol. Yes. Don't, and choose two as the answer. Yes. Students, ensure you don't make that mistake. All right? Please. Because Please. if you choose an incorrect answer, it might just be one of the options. I know, right? Because there are four and, and only one is correct. not because it's an option <laughs> means that it's correct. Definitely. Okay? So let's finish this one, Latoya. So we know 5 squared is 25. 3 squared, of course, is 9. Yes. And if we subtract these values, we are finding now the square root of 16. Which is not 8. Which is not 8. <laughs> but 4. four. All right, so let's go to question six. And this is a follow-on from the previous one. But in this case, Latoya, we know that three asterisk six is actually 12 and two asterisk five is actually nine. And now we're being asked to find what is A asterisk B. What's defining that operation? Okay, so that means that I'm looking at these two equations because they're equal signs there. Mm -hmm. And I need to see what pattern all right that i would have used to get these equations so what would i have done to the three and the six to get 12 and i would have to do that very same thing to the two and the five to get nine i'm looking at it as i see a pattern coming out in my head but i don't want to say it yet because okay. i want us to actually look through the options for this one just in case they can't pick it up definitely so let's run through these options quickly so the first one uh says four multiplied b subtract a so all we're doing here latoya is to fill in the values for b and, and a, a and actually working it out now having done the substitution here we're seeing that the result of what's in the bracket is 3, and of course, 4 to multiplied 3 is 12. Right, so it so actually worked for the first one. But can I select it for the answer? No, because it has to work for both options. It has op to options. work for both options. So let's test it for the second one. Hmm. Well, nah. we got 12, but that's not what we're supposed to get. We're supposed to get 9, right? We're supposed to get 9. So clearly, this cannot be the, cannot be the rule, Can't be so it. to speak, for this right. one. Let's try B. So here it's a square subtract b square. So here we substituted our values and hmm. We're not getting that 12. We're not getting that 12. Does so it make sense to check the second one? It doesn't. Because remember, we're working on a time constraint. And it must and we work ain't got for both. Time to waste. So, yes. All right. So definitely b is out. Let's try c. All right, and we, we come up on one more Latoya that actually works. Okay, but it, it, works, it works for one. It works for one. Let's test if it works for the other. Womp womp. Or a subset. Oh, seven and not nine. Out. Womp womp. Mm. Okay, you, uh, students, when you get to this point, you might be tempted to say, oh, it's D. Check it out. Okay? Check, work it first before you check. Just in case you made an error Somewhere previously. up top, exactly. Yes. So let's So let's check. substitute. So here we have 2a added to b, and of course we're substituting our a as 3 and our b as 6. And what do you know? We got our 12. Let's check the other part. Hmm. Works nicely. It did. It did. So our correct answer here is d. All right. So this is what we're going to do now. I think we should leave this question. I agree. You work on it, put it on social media, hashtag TVJ class time, yes? So, and we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. I Don't hope they move. took the screenshot though, you know?
Welcome back. Let's continue with the lesson. So Latoya, we left our students with this question to solve and I hope they did. I hope they did. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Now, this question gave us some values for the variables x, y and t. x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 3 and t is equal to 2. And we're asked for the value of x divided by y all raised to the power of T. Teed. <laughs> All teed. <laughs> yes. So um, this is a fairly simple question. So let's do our substitution. substitution. Now I want to point out here, Latoya, that the entire fraction is squared. Yes. Right? And we know from before that when values are squared, whether they were positive or negative in the first place, really doesn't matter. The, the result is actually a positive value. Right. Yes, yeah, so in my mind, A is out in my head. Oh. Immediately. Yes. But, yeah. So let's, let's work it out, though. We know that square means to multiply a number or quantity by itself, by itself mm -hmm. which we have done here. And so the result is 4 9th. And I want you to notice that option A was negative 4 9th, not true? Yes. So it's important for us to understand what happens when we square um, values. And I also want to point out, just in case you would have only squared the numerator, hmm. there's an option there for you, which is C. So you so, have to be very careful and ensure yes. that you realize that the entire fraction is squared. Definitely. Definitely. All right, question eight. This one is fairly simple. It's a fraction addition. Sometimes students get scared of fractions, not true? Yes. Especially algebraic fractions, Definitely. right? Definitely. But they operate on the same principle, don't it's they? The same. Same yeah. principle. So what do we need to do first? Find the LCM. Ah, but <laughs> when we're looking at the LCM, Natalia, we know, you know, this LCM could never be 8x squared at all because 8, first of all, is not even a multiple of 5 and 3. Right? Neither of the two. <laughs> so we can go ahead and eliminate A and, and B, B for right. sure. But what's the LCM though? Call yourself the bigger number. Okay, just really? kidding. 15x. <laughs> <laughs> so the LCM is actually 15x. 15x. Now, just as though we would actually work our algebra uh, or regular sorry, fractions, fractions without yes. variables, it's the same idea. So sorry. let us now look what will our numerator be now that we have found our LCM. So we have rewritten the fractions using 15x as our denominator. Mm -hmm. Now we know that 5x into 15x is actually three times. Yes. We didn't just take the three and put up there, right? Right, we created we, equivalent we created fractions. created equivalent fractions because our numerator must now be multiplied by three. Yes. Similar approach, uh, 3x, if we were to see how many times it goes into 15x, would have been five times, correct? Yes. Notice now, again, that we're creating equivalent fractions, and so it's two multiplied by five to give us 10. Now that we have the same denominator, Latoya, same principle applies again. We just operate on the numerator, so we add them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There we go. Beautiful. Easy peasy cheesy. Wow. Algebra finish already? Time flies when you're having fun, right? Right. <laughs> so right. now we need to transition into relations, functions, and graphs. All right. Don't take off your algebra hat. There is some algebra here. Definitely. Yes. So the equation of the line passing through the point 0, 2 and has a gradient of 1 third is, so what are we required to do? We need to find the equation of the line. Yes, and there is something, we have a general equation that we use for straight lines, right? Yes, we do. What's that again? Y equal mx plus c. Right, so y equal mx plus c. Um, but m and c are actually values, yeah? Very Constants. special values that we know. Mm, what does the m represent again? I think it's the gradient. Gradient, right. 
So hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause, pause, pause. So I'm looking at the question, right? And mm -hmm. it tells me that I'm looking for the equation of a line whose gradient is one third. Right. I know that the M value represents the gradient. Yes. So where M is, I'm expecting to see one third. Yes. So let's look at our options now. Okay. So oh, we, we have Y eliminate. equal three X, clearly. <laughs> Not it. Not it. Y equal three X added to two. Hmm. Again, not, not it. it. So we're increasing our chances, right? Yes, 50-50. All right, but there are two of them there that has uh, M being one-third or the gradient being one-third. So we need a little bit more information. Yes. But what? we know that yeah. the C value mm -hmm. represents the Y-intercept. That's a big what word. And I'm going to tell you, man, okay. what happens at the Y-intercept? Well, this is where the y this is the y coordinate when x equals zero. Oh. The point where the curve cuts the y axis. Curve, remember, this is a the line. The line, the line, <laughs> sorry, the line the cuts line the cuts y, y axis. axis. All right, so I'm looking at this Latoya, and it says that the the y-intercept is that y-coordinate when x is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So let's double back to our point in the question. So we're looking at this point right here. What's the x value there? Zero. Okay, what's the y value there? Two. Two. Therefore, when I look at my equation, right where C is supposed to be, I should see a value of positive two. two. Yes. So let's look now. And from there, we can clearly select our correct answer. Which is dum -da -da D. There you go. Let's okay, that was pretty easy. Yeah, not bad. Not let's bad continue. At all. All right, so what is the gradient of the straight line 2y equal negative 3x subtract 8? Okay, hmm. so they give us the equation and we need to find the gradient. Yeah. But I can pick it out easy, man. You just tell me that the m is the gradient and it's right there, negative 3. If you dare say negative 3, you know, I should just send you a virtual conch right now. <laughs> Remember the general equation is y equal mx Plus C. Oh. With, uh, this is not saying Y equal okay. something, something. It is saying 2Y is equal to negative 3X subtract 8. Okay, my bad. Yes, so please kindly <laughs> get this equation in the general form and then we can talk. So let's go. All right, so students, don't be like me. Don't make that error, okay? <laughs> please don't. So we can easily divide through, right, by uh, positive 2. And that now tells me that the equation is actually y equal negative 3 half x mm -hmm. subtract 4. Okay, so now I know my gradient. Yes. That's negative 3 halves. Yes. But guess what? As we said earlier, I chose negative 3 as my answer and there was negative 3 in the option. So we have to be very careful very and we careful. have to be on point and as accurate as possible. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. All right. Hmm, and we seem to be on a, a linear path Trajectory. this morning. <laughs> yes. Which of the following points lie on the line y equal 2x subtract 3? All right. So, Latoya, you to figure out if the points lie on the line. We really need to figure out if these x values, when we actually put them in the function here yes. if the y values are matching up. That you makes know? sense. So let's, let's use a table for this. Okay. So we're going to start with the first point. So we're using the option of checking the, the possible answers and seeing which working one backwards. works. Working backwards. All right. So great. let's go with two. So when what? I put two in the equation, in the equation here, so substituting for x. Multiplied by two would have given us four. Yes. Subtract three would give us one. Which means that's not A. Not A. All right. Let's try B. All right, so we have our four there. Two multiplied by four gives us eight. Subtract three gives us five. And hmm. that's not? B is out as well. Let's run along with zero. So two multiplied by zero is zero. Subtract three. That's negative three, so that works. But that we're works. not going to just choose that. We're In going case to I made check. a mistake, right? <laughs> yes. All right, let's check negative two. 
So 2 multiplied by negative 2 is actually negative 4. Yes. Subtract 3 negative is actually seven. negative 7. Hmm. And somebody might say negative 4, subtract 3 is going to give them negative 1. You know, right? Yeah. And that's why that option is there. Yes. <laughs> Again, be very careful. Precise. Very, very careful. Precision is very important. So our answer is indeed C. And I want to point out, Latoya, because earlier we said the C value. Let's look at our C value here. Our C value here is actually negative 3. Yes. And we said that is the value that corresponds with when X, X equals 0. So again, we can double check. And if you knew that, then quickly you wouldn't necessarily need to go through because you have a premise, a very conceptual premise on which you can choose your answer, saving you on some time. There you go. All Definitely. Right. Let's move on. So the range of F. All right, so, so F basically is mapping X here to negative X squared. All right, so we have a function such that our X values are mapping to negative X squared. And we're asked for the range, and we've been given the domain. And we have the list of values there, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Fancy words, range yeah. and domain. I was just about to ask you, <laughs> what's the range, what's, what's the, the range? domain? What's the domain? Okay, so what I can recall... The domain are your x values, your input values, All right. and the range are usually your y values, your, your output. output values. All right, so let's do some input in your, is that a word? Anyway, let's do that <laughs> and check. So we're going to input the domain into the function, which is negative x squared, yes? Yes. And we need to see what will be the output values mm -hmm. to determine the range. All, All right. right, so let's check. So... Negative 2, we know that when we square negative 2, it's positive 4, right? Yes. But guess what? We have to be careful of this negative right here because it means every value I get when I square x, I need to multiply it by negative 1. Mm -hmm. So if I got 4 when I squared negative 2, I need to multiply it by negative 1, mm -hmm. which is going to now give me negative 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got you. Similarly, if I square negative 1, it's going to be positive 1, but I need to multiply by negative 1 here. So it's not that you're saying negative x squared. So it's not negative x all squared. Right. The square here is applying only to the x. And so once you get the answer, negative. we have to multiply by negative 1. Got you. All right, so let's fill in. So notice now when I start to input those positive values, Again, when I square 1, it's still positive 1. Mm -hmm. Same thing as when I square negative 1. Mm -hmm. But again, when I multiply by this negative 1 here as a coefficient, then it's actually going to map me right back to negative 1. And likewise for positive 2. There you go. So we're seeing here that the range is actually, let's check, negative 4, negative 1, and 0. B. B. Great. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Which of the following represents the graph of a function? What is a function? Hmm. So here's the thing. What I remember about function, in a nutshell, just in case you don't remember the fancy definition, mm -hmm. you want to ensure that each input value maps to only one output. In other words, you want to make sure that each x match to only one y. Okay. Now, when it's in a graph like this, we mm -hmm. can do what's called a vertical line test. Okay. So what's that? <laughs> well, as it as the name suggests, it's checking it with a vertical line. So okay. you have a pencil in the exam, no? Okay. So I'm gonna reach for your pencil and see what's happening. So we're gonna pass this pencil across the 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 graph. I hope our students saw that. Let's do it again, Latoya. And we're checking if it's passing any two points at the same time, any two of these. So do it again, Latoya. All right, only pass one here, one there, one there, one there. Okay. So this seems to have passed the vertical line test. Okay. But for the benefit of our students, we're going to check the others Definitely. and see what's happening. 
Right to there. there. Mm -hmm. to, to there, there. again. So yeah. we notice here. Do it again. Ah. Uh, so we're noticing here, Latoya, uh -huh. that right at this point, there is a single X value here matching two, two, y two different Y values. Yes. So as we're passing the pencil across, we'll notice that it will pass these two points at the same time. And we see the same thing happening out here. Yes. Failed the vertical line test. Zero. Let's check C. I didn't even have to check C, though. <laughs> All of them are right. on a vertical line. That was a giveaway, right? Yes. All right, let's check D. Right there. Mm -hmm. See that? Yes. Yes, so this one X value here is mapping to three, three y, values. y values. Which means then that... A would be the only one that's really showing us a function. Not true. The yes. others may be relations, but not certainly function. not functions. And that's what they asked for. Definitely. So let's run along. Question 14. Which of the following diagrams best illustrates a function? So we on the streak of a function again. You know, I was about to choose my option. You and were? And then I realized that the... Arrows are <laughs> pointing into the opposite direction of what I'm used to. Because usually the first oval with values mm -hmm. or circles at this moment would represent your input values mapping to your output values. However, this time it's the output that is shown first. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. I noticed that too. When I saw this question, I was like, hmm. Somebody trying to, you know, trick us. Yeah, uh, or see if you really know. We really if know. If you really know, that's the thing. So let's examine them. So we're seeing here our input values are mm -hmm. here and our output values are here. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled, students, if you see something like this. All right, so let's check. We said each input value must match to only one output value. Okay. So let's check. Input, yeah, one. Um, this input mapping to only two. It's mapping to two. Yes. So hmm. X besides. So it, it missed the mark, not true. Missed yes. the mark, definitely. So let's check this one. Yes. Mapping to one, mapping to one, but who problem right here. This one is matching to two, two separate ones. Let's check here. Well, that not mapping to anything here. Hmm, problem. Let's check this one. Mapping to one. Here it's input mapping to one. And here input mapping to one. Ding, ding, ding. We ding, have a winner. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. So you want to pay attention to the direction of the arrow, which will tell you what, where is your input values and where are the output values. Definitely. And that will help you to decide which of the diagram is representing a function. Be not fool. It doesn't have to be on the left. It doesn't have to be on the right. Just watch the arrows, yeah? Just watch and the And get arrows. the direction. All right. So question 15 asks us about the gradient. We're going to read the question. The gradient of AB in the figure is... Hmm. Okay, so this time we didn't get a equation, but we got a... <laughs> diagram. A, a graph. <laughs> a graph. Okay. So I'm looking at this Latoya and uh, reading my graph from left to right, right? I'm seeing that I'm pretty much going up a slope. Positivity. Natural, going up a slope. So I'm expecting my gradient to be positive, right? Yes. All right. So we could actually eliminate some options here. We can eliminate two and we can eliminate, we, sorry, we can eliminate negative two and negative half. We're gonna allow our students to munch on this. Yeah, ooh, we're, like that. <laughs> we're gonna allow our students to munch on this. We're going to our final break. We are going to our final break. We'll wrap things up when we return.
Welcome back to class time. Let's continue. So, Latoya, we were just looking at this question, right? Yes. And we noticed that as we were moving from left to right, when we examined our graph, we were seeing that it was going in an upward direction. Positive. And so we said that the gradient must be positive. Yes. And so by virtue of that, we eliminated option C, which is negative half. Yes. And option D, which is negative two. Right? Okay. So we need to decide now between positive two and positive half. Let's see. How do we find we gradients? Said, yeah. All right, From a so, graph, that is, because we know it's the M yes. in the equation. So yes. I need to see what's the vertical movement. Mm -hmm. So let's check that first. All right, so there's my vertical movement, and that's two units. Let's check my horizontal movement, four units. Okay. All right, so it's my vertical movement divided by my horizontal movement. You might hear a change in... Change in y, y divided, divided by, by change, change in x. x. All right, so let's fill in the values that we obtained here. And that can be simplified to a half. All Great. right. Awesome. Awesome. Question number 16. No. 16 already? Already. So if A, B, and C, right, are constants, and in this case, we know that A is greater than zero mm -hmm. for this question, the equation of the graph could be which of these? Okay. So looking at them, clearly they're all quadratic, so no, no giveaways there. Mm -hmm. However... What do we notice about this curve? It's smiling. <laughs> happy. <laughs> it's happy, right? <laughs> it's happy. So as we look at this type of curve where we have a minimum value, value down mm -hmm. here, then we say that the graph smiles in layman terms. Mm -hmm. But what that tells us is that my A value is actually a negative value, right? Which means that uh, when I'm looking at these equations here, let's look at A. A says y equal ax squared. A already Negative is or positive? Positive. What did I say? Negative. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, positive. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And it says it in the question that A is greater than zero. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for picking me up. That's all I tell no you when you're tired, is it? Now, uh, let's examine the equations here. So we're looking for A being some positive value. So we're eliminating anywhere that we see A showing up as negative. Yes. Right? Which would be B here, because we have negative A here. And let's check this one. Aha. So we can eliminate so we're those. we're looking at the x squared term. Mm-hmm. So graphs for equations like B and D would be thrown in. Mm. All right. Sad. So we're choosing now between A and C. Hmm. Now, one of the things I know, Latoya, is that the C value, and I want our students to zoom in, our, our C value, if we started with a graph right here, our C value basically just moves it up or down. It never shifts it in any other direction, right? Okay. Another thing I know is that my B value, whenever B is zero, right? My line of symmetry is my y axis. So in other mm -hmm. words, if b is zero, my graph must be somewhere here so that the y axis is my line of symmetry. Okay. So when I look at this graph, Latoya, I'm seeing the line of symmetry coming in. Hmm. And it certainly does not look like the y-axis. The y-axis. So what the b-value does is that it shifts the graph, right? It shifts the graph in such a way that the y-axis is no longer 
the axis of symmetry. Okay, we right? suggest that we have a B value. We suggest Greater based on this zero. that or we have a B value non -zero. that's not zero. That's not zero. We have a B value that's yes. not zero. So let's look back at our options now and see. Option A, once we're not seeing any BX here, it means that B is zero. Yes. Could not be the option. So we can actually select C. All right. Beautiful. So, well, final question. If f of x is equal to 3x added to 2 and g of x is equal to 2x added to 5, we're asked to find the value of f of g of 5. Okay. What does this mean? So we're doing composite functions, mm -hmm. yes? So, okay, I can simplify in g of x first. All right, so we're going to find g of 5. G so in other five. words, wherever yes. x is, I'm going to put Substitute five. 5 there. In which yes. function? The g, g of, of x. x function. So let's do that quickly. So g of 5 is now 15. 2 multiplied by 5, that's 10. Add 5, 15. All right, so what am I going to do with this 15 now? I'm confused. Okay, so I know that g of 5 is 15. Mm -hmm. So I was originally asked to find f of g of 5. Mm -hmm. I know that's 15, so I'm now finding f of 15. Oh, so I'm realizing, Latoya, that whatever g of 5 was, in yes. our case it's 15, substitute we need it. to substitute it into the f, the f of, of x, x function. function. Okay, yes. beautiful. So let's do that. All right, so f of x is 3x added to 2. And so we can easily now substitute our 15. That's 47. 47. Which is t. What do you know? I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yes. So I saw this very nice picture, Karima, and I had to, I had to show the students. You don't want to be like Sylvester here, right? You're going to come <laughs> prepared, okay? And you're going to just read the questions carefully twice, thrice if you must. Pace yourself, guys. Estimate your answers if you can and eliminate the wrong answers. And do not, do not, do not leave any questions blank. Please. Definitely. So, guys, we're out of time for this lesson, right? Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep practicing and stay be safe. Yes, stay safe. Wash your hand. Sanitize. Wear your mask. Definitely. <laughs>